Right. Hi, everyone. Welcome again to Author Story. I'm Alexander Lim, your host. And for this episode, I'm interviewing Gurutej Khalsa, author of the book, A Slice of the Beloved. And for those of you following along who are interested, you can go over now to the Amazon link in the description below the video and check out or get a copy of her book. So Gurutej, welcome back to Author Story. Great to have you with us as our guest. Thank you, Alex. I'm really glad to be here. Fantastic. So, Gurtej, uh, you know, I acknowledge that uh, we, we spoke to you around two years earlier, two years before covering the 13th month. But, you know, for the benefit of our listeners who are new or who haven't heard about you, can you tell us a little bit about, about yourself? What's your author story? The part about writing the book or the part about what made me write the book? Or, or a little what? bit about yourself, your background, where you come from, how you got into yoga, that sort of thing. Oh, okay. Um, I grew up in the Midwest okay. in a small town. I went to, my parents didn't like that so much, so they sent me to boarding school uh, in high school. And, uh, while I, and then I went to college and uh, University of Missouri, and then I transferred to the University of Arizona. And this guy um, fell in love with my friend, and we're both like 5'9", and she weighed, she weighed a lot more than I did. Uh, she was a big girl, right? And he was probably about five five, and he was smart enough though to know that if he was going to invite her to dinner, right, at his apartment, he needed to invite both of us. So he did, and he made us dinner, mm -hmm. and it was most, he had such fun cooking. It was such good food. He said, "I'm a vegetarian," and I was like, well, "What is what is that?" This was 1968 or nine, and I was like, "Oh my god." So I became a vegetarian on the spot. He was so impressed with that. He showed me that he was doing yoga in his closet book. And I was like, love the concept, but, you know, really don't want to do it in a closet, you know, with a book. So right. um, I got, I was taking a speech class and I got an assignment to do a speech on something you're interested in, but you don't know anything about. And I thought, well, that would be yoga. So I went to the library, and there was only one printed book at that time, if you can imagine that now, right, on yoga. Right, right. <laughs> but, uh, um, it, I looked at all these manuscripts and all these really, these bright, you could see these men's bright eyes. They were tiny and skinny, and they were wearing what looked like a diaper to me at the time. And I just could do a lot of these poses that they were doing. And so I gave this whole talk on yoga, and... All these people came up and said, where can we do this thing called yoga? And I was like, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. And then a few months later, somebody ran in and said, there's yoga in the park. Mm -hmm. And I just started doing it. And I did it every day. And I loved it. And I, I fell in love with it. And it was just like, it was like home week, old home week. I just, I, I really got it. And it was, um, you know, it, it's what got me to stop doing drugs. And okay. yeah, it was, I got connected and high. Everybody wants to be high, right? Right, right. And the truth of high, when I taught the kids yoga in high school, I used to say, you're sent to high school to get high. And they were like, yes. And I said, but there's better ways to do it. Yeah. You can get so high with your breath mm -hmm. and with your, you know, with moving your body and opening parts of your body. So that was, yeah, that was the greatness to me. It was like being able to take my body with me into the court of the divine, which, you know, the whole Catholic thing was all about your body was bad. Right. And I was, whoa, look at this. <laughs> your body is really fabulous and it can open up your, you know, your spirit, your soul, whatever you want to call it. Right. So that. Okay, cool. So, and I take it over the years, like you, you, uh, you worked with uh, I don't know what you call it, yoga masters, uh, yoga teachers, and things like that over the years. I I did. I uh, uh, Yogi Bhajan was my teacher. I followed him all over the world and spent a tremendous amount of time with him. And um, before that, I had done uh, TM and and studied self realization as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, I've also done. I've studied uh, Anyasar yoga, mm -hmm. uh, Iyengar yoga, just, uh, you know, to understand other forms and branches of yoga as well. So I've been doing this for a very long time, 
49, 49 years I've been teaching. I've built yoga communities all over Canada. Okay. And, uh, yeah. All right. And about the yoga, you mentioned, like, there, there's this diff, there's this kind of yoga, there's this other kind of yoga. What are the differences between the different styles of yoga? Well, that could take us, like, our entire lifetime to go over. Absolutely. Right. Is it most yogas... Uh, in terms of the asana part of the yoga, the physical experience of the yoga, are, are built around salutation to the sun. Mm-hmm. Kundalini yoga is built around systems of the body. So it's built around the chakras, it's built around the nervous system, it's built around balancing your brain. Um, so it's built around a completely different system. And there's a lot of breathing and um, a lot of different kinds of breathing. And, you know, as human beings, it's like that's our link to the divine is our breath. You know, okay. how, do we, how do we define life? We define life by when you take your first breath. We define death as when you take your last breath. And in between as human beings, we forget to breathe. And it's not just long, deep breathing. There's so many kinds of breath that, you know, when you're overwhelmed, if you can do a four-part sipping breath, there's, you know, four-part, eight-part, 16-part, 22-part, but the easiest is four-part. And if you just remember, like, either to do it in through your nose or your mouth, and just inhale in four parts and exhale in four parts. Right. You do that for, like, 90 seconds, you'll find, oh, my God, I can actually deal with whatever it is that I'm trying to deal with at this moment. Okay. And uh, from what I understand, Kundalini Yoga is the yoga behind A Slice of the Beloved. Is this correct? Yes, it is. But I've taken it into a place where how to use yoga, which really means to yoke or unite. That's what it means. To yoke or unite your relationship. And the way that the book is laid out is the first chapter is about how do you connect to you? The first section. How do you connect to you as a human being? How do you create that union inside of you? And then how do you go out and meet the other? Okay, how do you connect with your partner? Mm -hmm. Or how do you attract a partner? Then the third part of it is how do you build the soul of the relationship? Mm -hmm. And the fourth part is how do you come from that platform of a connected relationship and serve more profoundly in the world? So. You can't, it's very hard to serve from empty. Yeah. And this is really how to get full and connected to yourself and, and, and to the other in your life, the other beloved. That's why it's called a slice of the beloved. So it's how do you practice seeing the beloved in others? So there's, there's wonderful yoga and meditation in it. There's also some really good, uh, talking exercises that couples can do to, um, really make their relationship deeper and juicier and more connected and more knowledgeable about what drives the other person, not just what they tell you, but what is the subconscious driver? Because we all have those and we don't usually know what they are. Right, right. So just just to confirm, the beloved, by your term of the beloved, does it mean uh, the other person or is it some someone, some essence within the person themselves? It really is. The beloved is really being able to see who that being is. What do we really want from each other? We want to be seen and heard and understood, right? Those are the most deep longings of a human being. And so much of the time we talk at each other. Right. We don't talk to each other or with each other, right? So it's it's really how to be able to have connections. I mean, literally, if, if couples would use this book and do one thing when they got home from work at night together for like 90 seconds to three minutes, they would find that instead of trying to figure out where the other person was for the next two hours or not caring, right. being so overloaded by your day that you don't really, you know, you don't even care what's going on with the other person because you're just shot. Right. But if you do this, you will not only rejuvenate yourself, but you will be at the same place so that you can talk with each other. Mm. You know, my teacher said, you know, you can either live at each other, which a lot of us do, right? You can live with each other or you can live for each other. Mm. And for each other doesn't mean you lose yourself. It just means that, that you actually get 
when you live for the the soul of your relationship, mm -hmm. then you honor that other person. And in order to do that, you've got to get some juice running through your own being, right? Otherwise, it's like you can't. You can't. When you're when you're empty, you can't see anybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got that. Cool. And I'll tell you something else magical is when I finished, I was doing a lot of couples classes right. and a lot of work with couples. And when I finished writing this book, my beloved showed up. <laughs> nice. Cool. By myself. I had been by myself for 17 years. Uh -huh. And um, yes. So. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, Gurtej, about the book, um, you know, for the benefit of our listeners, can you tell us what the book's all about? Well, you told us a little bit about what it's about, but who exactly is it for? Is it for just, you know, people into yoga? Is it for just anyone who wants to, who's kind of interested in deepening a relationship? Yes, it is. And like I said, it's also for people who want to attract a relationship because if you really get into the first part of this book and you have such a deep relationship to yourself, you will attract a person who's ready for a deep relationship. Because a lot of the times people say, I really want a relationship, I really want a relationship, but they don't they don't define what it is that they're really longing for and are they able to meet the other person at that place of their longing. So this is for couples to deepen their relationship and get more connected. And like I said, there's all sorts of wonderful exercises, not just the asanas. But some of these exercises are like really fun things you can do with your couple, you know, your partner. And, you know, you can even like, some of them are even like almost like you can fight with each other almost in a really fun and playful way to just work out some of that frustrated energy. And if you do that, the capacity to speak to each other really and listen, have any space to listen. Because when we're upset, there is no listening space happening. <laughs> we just, yeah. we just want to be heard. Like, you need to listen to me. Right. But you can work something out and really, you know, wrestle with each other a little bit. You know, and so some of these exercises are really how to be able to do that, too. Yeah. You know, so that then you can sit down and be willing to hear and be heard right 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 definitely so Guru what made you decide to write the book was there like an aha moment where you thought you know i gotta write this thing i gotta write this book i gotta get this out in the world or was it more like a growing realization as time went on sort of like okay stage one stage two and then you come to a point you realize you gotta write the book well this was really about working with all these couples and seeing the same thing and hearing the same thing over and over and over again in the counseling that I was doing, in the couples work that I was, you know, the classes and stuff. And I was like, okay, you know, you've been given a whole toolkit and you need to pass this on to not just the people that you're working with privately. Right. That's, so that's really it. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. Got that. And of course, uh, hence, the, hence the book itself. So yeah, all right, cool. So Guratej, I mean, you've you've dealt with couples um, over the years, as you mentioned. What is what is it about? I don't know. Our relationships, nature of our relationships, human nature that causes relationships to fall out. Like one partner gets more to the other, or they get go at each other. What in your <laughs> I think is that you're in a relationship, not for the ease of it. You're in a relationship, if you really, to grow. And so you bump up against each other and you, you know, everybody's got their greatness and everybody has their darkness. And you bump up against both the greatness and the darkness. And if you have courage and if you have the right tools, um, then, you know, I'm not saying every relationship, you know, can succeed because I understand, you know, being married to a narcissist is not um, <laughs> usually not a, a possible thing to sustain for very long. So there's certain things that aren't sustainable, but there is a tremendous amount of relationships. When somebody says they fell out of love with somebody, right. all, they're, all they're saying is I fell out of connection. Mm -hmm. And when somebody says to me, you know, my partner's cheating, I'm like, 
No, cheating happened a long time before somebody got physical with somebody else. Mm-hmm. Cheating happened when we stopped showing up in our relationship. When we stopped being connected, when we stopped putting the time and energy into the relationship. You want something to die? Just ignore it. Think about a plant you don't water. It'll die. Mm-hmm. The same thing with the relationship. A relationship takes energy and time and tuning in and if you're not willing to do that then you know maybe you should not be in one and if you think a relationship is for ease it's not it's yes it's for joy and it's for you know ecstasy and it's for you know making love and it's for all these things but how do you make love all day long not just a sex act but how do you actually do wonderful little things that show your partner that you care then you don't fall out of love falling out of love just means that you know i expected something from my partner that they didn't give me and i just stopped being present hmm. okay okay got it. and and that's definitely a different viewpoint from from what most people think i mean uh, most people think oh i'm going to find a husband or a wife the man of my dreams the woman of my dreams we meet each other we fall in love and it's happily ever after but that's really the case is it <laughs> they swallowed the fairy tale right right <laughs> that's not even what it's for mm-hmm. you know it's for getting yourself to be more connected so that that longing that we all have to belong which is one of our deepest longings belong to with another person belong in community all of that longing to belong is because we're made to want to belong to everything you know my teacher had a saying if you can't see god in all you can't see god at all mm-hmm. and that's the thing it's like the divine lives in everything and the time where we're not seeing that means the time where we need to reconnect to us so that we can get back to that in the war in the hardships in the greatness and you know sometimes people think that when you're talking about these things that you've never had a challenge right. in your life right. right and i can right. tell you i've had every challenge i've been i had an arranged marriage to a narcissist mm-hmm. while we were trying to build spiritual communities you know i've been a single mother I've, you know, been through these are just the major ones. I, you know, I've had an adopted child and my daughter both leave their body die as you, most people say. So, you know, I've been through I I went through in the last 7 years I've been through 6 deaths of people close to me. Wow. And and my fiance's son is a, you know, fought addiction for a very long time. So, It's not that I'm coming from a place that I've never had a challenge. Right. I'm sharing the things with you in this book that I've learned from the whole yogic pathway, but from living that pathway and finding out what was effective for me and my students and my clients. Okay, nice. Cool. So yoga then, I mean yoga is uh you can say that yoga is a very effective tool to enable that connection to enable the relationship to keep growing to keep it healthy to keep the partners uh connected with each other would this be would this be correct all i can say is try it and see it's mm-hmm. you know this book is fun and exciting and loving and playful and deep and you know go get your copy and see you know if you just put it on the shelf or you just put you know keep it somewhere on your ipad right right you know going to do you any good but if you actually keep it out and available and pick it up and just do an exercise with your partner every so often get your kids involved in it you know yeah it you will find that all of a sudden there's a juiciness in your life that you've been longing for mm, nice nice cool definitely cool So Gurta, I have to ask this a slice of the beloved from what I understand this is a relationship between couples in relation ah uh, yeah relationship between couples but can it is there anything in it that can help out say someone in an office 95 job feels he or she is getting you know getting the short end of the stick from his work or his boss or his colleagues or maybe someone who might feel the need of some charging with what river relationship he or she is in like maybe with a brother or sister with his parent or something like that 
Well, the first part of this book is totally dedicated to you being connected to you. So in the, in the first section of the book, it's very much about uh, tools like that. Yes, oh. yes. But as you know, the 13th month and, you know, my flip charts are much more geared to those really fast things that you can do in that moment. But the first, cha the first uh, section, it's not just the first chapter, but the first section of this book is, is that, yes. Okay. All right. I got it. So um, I take it then that getting connected to the oneself is very important for getting connected with another person then. <laughs> yes, I, I take it that that's true. Because <laughs> I mean, some, some people don't know this. I mean, some people think like, feel like, from what I understand, some people feel like they have a lack within themselves and they find someone else to fill that lack within them. Yes, that's called the A-frame, right? You lean in on somebody else and think that they're going to make you feel beautiful or worthwhile or, you know, amazing and that when you don't feel that yourself. And and the answer to that is, um, I'm sorry, but that's just not true. <laughs> yes. yes. Definitely, definitely. Nobody else can fill that void. It's, you know, it's a huge void and nobody can fill it for you. And in order to fill that void, then we have to become connected with ourselves, with our, I think you call it the divine, the, the divine essence within ourselves. Is this correct? Yes, your divine essence. Everybody has that light, that, you know, being. That's why we're called a human being, the light of your mind, not just your brain, but the mind, the knowingness in every cell of your body. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So for the benefit of our listeners, uh, is, is this correct then? A human being is H-U spelled H-U-E-M-A-N? That's the way I spell it because the truth of it is that's, that's what we are. We are that light of our being. All right. Nice. Okay. So Guru Tej, I'm sure you're aware that, you know, unlike in 1968 where you had, you know, you can just find one yoga book in a library. <laughs> There are a lot of yoga books out there. There are a lot of meditation books out there and also books on relationships, which uh, the mm -hmm. Asides to the Beloved is about. You know, not to say that the others are, I don't know, for lack of a better word, inadequate, but what is it about A Slice of the Beloved that would make people prioritize buying your book over others on relationships? Because it works not only with the relationship, but it works with you. And then you in the relationship with the other and then how to build the essence of that relationship and then how to be able to serve. So I don't know of any other book that does this. And yes, this one does. This one gives you exercises that you can do together. It gives you meditations you can do together. It gives you, um, you know, it dialogue that you can do. It gives you uh, exercises, you know, that you can dive into the depth of each other with these exercises some of them are so profound that you only you either tell your your part of it or you listen are you uh you either tell or you listen you don't do both on the same day right. you actually only you know either are the listener or the the divulger so this book has a lot of it, it's very juicy and very deep I know people, I want to say meaty, but being a vegan, that's not a, <laughs> right. I use, but, um, so yes. And I can say, you know, if you, I mean, the thing that people always say to me is that you are such a light and, you know, so if you want, I can say, if you want to be that lit human being, if you want to be a light in your life, if you want your relationship, you know, to be more alive and light, then you know, it's twenty dollars. It's like, but it's. I don't want you to buy this unless you're going to use it because just have their collector. You know, another thing on on a device or you know in your house is not what you want. Right. It's got to be used. I mean, it's got to be used. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's a tool, and if you look at at it as you have a you have a toolkit, mm -hmm. and men are more, you know, interested in this than women, but everybody needs a toolkit mm -hmm. and we need a life toolkit. And this is a relationship toolkit. Mm -hmm. So in your life, like how good is your, your relationship toolkit? And that's if, if you need some more good tools, then this is the book. Right. Cool. 
fantastic. Okay, so Gurutej, let's say you met with a couple. You know, they might be newly married, new in a relationship, or they could have been together for years. And you had only enough to that time to tell those people one thing about making their relationship work or creating energy for themselves in their relationship. What would be that one thing you would tell those people? And why would you tell them that? I would say to them, sit on the couch across from each other, mm -hmm. hold hands, mm -hmm. and just take turns saying, I love you. Mm. I love myself. Mm. And just say it to yourself and to the other and just do that. Look at each other in the eyes and just say that. Even if you don't think you do at that moment, even if you're like going, I don't know, even know if I love them or myself. Just play with it. Yeah. Okay. You become what you say. All right. Yeah. Okay. Got that. Cool. So, Gurtej, is there a place, any website or something like that where our listeners might be able to follow you or see for themselves uh, things that you hold, like teaching seminars that you might have in the future? Yes. Uh, it's just gurutej.com. And uh, that's G-U-R-U. Tej.com, and they can sign up and get my newsletters and um, stay connected. And there's a video in every newsletter that I send out. So it's a good way to stay connected. All right, cool, fantastic. <laughs> All right, so before we sign off, are there any last words of wisdom you'd like to share to inspire our listeners? I just want to say, remember why you're really here. And you're really here to be able to know how to light yourself up so that you can be a light. And we talk about how dark and challenging these times are. Right. So sign up for being the light and get some tools that help you to do that. Right. Okay. Got that. Cool. And definitely these tools work. I mean, uh, they all <laughs> come from your experience. These things do work. Yes. Yes, and you know, if you don't believe that, then once you start seeing my videos and you don't think that, that I have any light, then go do something else, you know. But, yeah, you know, see who that person is that you want to learn something from. Mm -hmm. And if they have something that you know that you want, then follow them. Right. That's, yeah, then learn from them. Yeah. All right, cool, fantastic. <laughs> Okay then, so in closing, the book is A Slice of the Beloved. The author is our guest, Gurtej Khalsa. And you can get her book on Amazon and also on her website at gurtej.com. So Gurtej, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for being an author story. Uh, it was pretty enlightening having you with us here today. Thank you, Alex. I really appreciate it. Cool. So if any of you listeners want to know more about this topic, please feel free to go ahead and check out A Slice of the Beloved. And if you'd like to follow our author interviews on YouTube, I invite you to subscribe to our channel. So bye for now, everyone. I'll be back next time on Author Story with another inspiring author.